Tashi Delek, welcome to the last or the third part of the political science chapter of federalism. In this class, we are going to discuss the very last topic that is decentralization. So decentralization means when the power of the central government and the state government is further shared or given to the local government, that is called decentralization. As you can see from the picture, here the central government and the state government is sharing power to the local government. So that is decentralization. In the previous classes, we discussed about the power sharing mainly between the central government and the state government. That is called federalism. When it comes to decentralization, there is a power sharing between the central government, state government and the local government. So let's talk about the decentralization in India. How the power sharing takes place between the central government, state government and the local government in India. India is a very vast country in terms of area and in terms of population also. Because of that, this vast country cannot be effectively run by two levels of government. Not only that, India has a large number of states. Not only that, within the states also there are different kinds of people living there. So in terms of religion, in terms of language, in terms of culture, in terms of tra traditions, so because of that, there is need of power sharing within the states also. So because of all these needs, finally the third level of government was introduced in India, that is called local government. So the local governments are the government which are set up in the villages and the cities area. So the main objective or the main idea or the basic idea be behind the setting up of the local government is that a large number of problems and issues can be best settled at the local level because at the local level there is a chances of people to directly participate in the decision making. So because of that, the government of India has made a several attempts to share power to the local government by setting up the government in the villages and the towns under the state government. So the local government was set up in the villages and in the cities area. So villages is also called rural. So city is also called urban. So the government which are set up in the village are called panchayat and the government the which are set up in the urban area or the city area is called municipalities. So the panchayat and the municipalities were set up under the state government. Even though the municipalities and the panchayat were set up but there was a little decentralization. Little decentralization means there is a little power sharing because of two reasons. Number one is that in most of the panchayat and the municipalities, elections were not held regularly, right? In case of state elections and in the case of central election, the elections are held after every five years. But in the panchayat and the municipalities, the elections were not held regularly. Okay, so because of that, they are not able to, you know, like elect their representative on time. When there, uh, when there is absence of representative, they will be, uh, you know, like uh, they will be uh, ineffective in the administration of the government. Not only that, the state government do not share, you know, like adequate or sufficient power or money to the local government because of that local government did not have the power and resources of its own to run this government. So because of that, there was a little decentralization or there was a little power sharing to the local government. Finally, all these change after 1992 because the central government has changed the constitution in order to make the local government more powerful. So the changes which are made in the constitutions are, number one is that the, the constitution has stated that it is compulsory to hold election regularly after every five years in the panchayat and the municipality. Second one is that the constitution has also provided that seats are reserved for the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and other backward classes. So these are the people who are mainly disadvantaged in the society. Right. These are the one who did not get equal opportunity. Right. These are the one who are usually lagging behind in the society. So in order to give them an equal representation in the government, the constitution of India has reserved a seat for them. OK, in the local government, not only that, 
The third one is that one third seats were reserved for the women in the local government, so that there will be a more participation from the women. Number four is that the state election commission. So state election commissions are a group of people who mainly deals with or whose main responsibility is to carry out the state election. But here the changes is made that the constitution stated that state election commission also have to conduct the panchayat and the municipal elections with the state election. So here the responsibility of conducting elections in the panchayat and the municipality were given to the state election commissions. And the fifth one is that the constitution has clearly stated that the state government have to share power and also the money with the local government so that the local government can you know like run effectively okay so these are the changes which are made by the you know central government in the constitution to make the third level of government more popular or more powerful so these are some of the images of the state election commissions of different states state election commissions main responsibility is to conduct state election now the constitution of india stated that state election commission have to also look after the election in the villages and the municipal so before moving to the next topic let me make you understand this if there is a one person it is called individual right if a few individual comes together it makes a family right when a few family comes together it makes a villages right okay so when a few villages comes together it makes a blocks right Okay, when a few blocks come together, it makes a district, right? When a few districts comes together, it makes a states. When a few states comes together, it makes a country. When a few com country comes together, it makes a world, right? Okay, so this concept will be very important for the coming topic to understand. Okay, so as I have already told you, the local government are set up in two different areas, that is rural area and the urban area. So in this topic, we are going to discuss about the rural local government. So rural local government means a local government in the villages area. So rural local government consists of three levels or three tiers. That starts from Gram Panchayat, Panchayat Samiti and the Zila Parishat. So before moving to the Gram Panchayat, we need to understand the Gram Sabha. As I have already mentioned, in order to understand the Gram Panchayat, it is very important to understand Gram Sabha first. So Gram Sabha is actually a meeting of a village. And this meeting is attended by those people who are above 18 years of age. Not only that, they also enjoy right to vote. So the voters in the village are the members of Gram Sabha. So Gram Sabha is very important in a village because these Gram Sabha also talks about the issue or the problems happening in the village so they meet twice or thrice in a year or they meet two times or three times in a year in order to discuss the issues or the conflicts or the problems happening in the village not only that gram sabha is also very important because gram sabha elect the members of gram panchayat so gram panchayat is a government in the village level it consists of few elected leaders, right? And Gram Panchayat performance is also checked by the Gram Sabha. Not only that, the Gram Panchayat, you know, they also come with the annual budget, right? This annual budget is finally approved or agreed by the Gram Sabha. So annual budget means here we are talking about the estimation of the income or the expenditure of a village in a one year. So for Gram Panchayat, Gram Sabha is very important because Gram Sabha look after the performance of Gram Panchayat. Now we will discuss the Gram Panchayat in detail. So Gram Panchayat is a government which is set up in the village and it consists of few elected members, right, called Panch. So these consist of few several members and these members are called Panch. Panch means five. Before Gram Panchayat, have five members nowadays in majority of the village they have around seven to seventeen members in the gram panchayat 
because there is increase in the population in the village nowadays. And these gram panchayat or these panchayat are, you know, like uh, they are headed by a person and they are headed by a sarpanch. So the head of the gram panchayat is called sarpanch. So gram panchayat members are elected directly by the gram sabha. So, and gram panchayat is the decision making body. So they, they are the one who take the decisions for the entire village. As we have already discussed, you know, like discussed that the problems or the issue are discussed in the Gram Sabha, whereas the final final decisions is taken by the Gram Panchayat, right? Okay, now going to the next level, that is Panchayat Samiti. So Panchayat Samiti is a government which is set up at the block level. So block is a collection of few village together, right? Okay, so Panchayat Samiti consists of few members or few Gram Panchayat from are different villages which comes under one, one block right panchayat samiti is also called as a block samiti or mandal samiti and panchayat samitis are elected by the panchayat members in that area or in that you know like in the area which consists of different villages right okay so the next one is next one is zilla parishad so the rural local government goes up to the, the uppermost layer of the rural local government is Zilla Parishad. Zilla Parishad means, it means district, district government, right? Okay, so district means when there is a collection of few blocks, right? So here they also have set up government that is called Zilla Parishad, right? So Zilla Parishad, okay. All the panchayat samitis, right? All the panchayat in the mandal or in the block, they all together form a Zilla Parishad. So Zilla Parishad is a government which is set up in the district and this government consists of, you know, all the panchayat samitis, right? It consists of all the panchayats from the block level. So most of the members of Zilla Parishad are elected. So it, uh, these are elected by the people, right? Okay, now. Now this is all about the rural local government. Okay, now coming to the next one that is urban local government. Here we are talking about the city local government. So, urban local government is divided into two, right? Okay, for a one city, they have set up a government and that government is called municipalities, right? Okay, so the head of the municipality is called municipal chairperson. And few, few big cities are grouped together and they are called municipal corporation, right? And they have formed a government there and the government is called municipal corporation. So the head of the municipal corporation is called mayor. So both the municipalities and, and the municipal corporations are headed by the elected bodies. So here the member of the municipalities and municipal corporations are uh, elected by the People. So it consists of people representative and these people representative control the municipalities and the municipal corporation. So that is all about the urban local government. Now, so the local government is the largest experiment in a democracy in India, right? Because why it is largest? Because number one is that there are almost like 36 lakh elected representative in the panchayat and municipalities, right? Panchayat and municipalities have almost like 36 lakh elected representative, you know, like walking in the government. It shows that there is a mass participation from the people, right, in the government. Number second is that it, the local government has a large number of women participation, right? That is mainly because the lo the government, the, the the constitution has reserved a seat one third seat for the women because of that it has increased the women representation or women participation in the local government even though the local government is the largest experiment in indian democracy but still there are lots of problems faced here number one is that even though the election even though the constitution stated that election need to be held regularly but there are few villages which does not held election regularly. Number two is that even in many, you know, like state, in even in many states, most of the state government 
has not share enough power to the local government because of that we still have a long way to achieve the idea of a self government or local government so that is all about the decentralization in india i hope you have understood now for the homework what you have to do is you have to go through the textual exercise and you have to uh, complete all that exercise thank you